All right, let me hit play. Hello and good afternoon, everyone, or good morning. This has been one heck of a day. Unfortunately, YouTube decided to drop some serious errors uh, prior to the show going live. Uh, Crispy Bomb, unfortunately, is having mic issues, so he's not going to be able to join us today. Uh, he doesn't like Discord, and I completely understand. Um, we are still waiting on the arrival of Jamie Moran from the UK and the uh, King David from the uh, um, Iron Lords podcast. Unfortunately, had a scheduling error. He had to take his missus to the to a doctor's appointment. She's okay. It was just that it was a scheduling error. He will be joining us along with So Shady, who's going to be making his triumphant return next Friday morning. So uh, we're going to have a good uh, show next week, but we're going to have an even better show today. And uh, if you've worked with me before and you like to jump in and you have the link to the Discord or you'd like me to send you one and you'd like to jump on the show, just hit me up. I have my, my, uh, my DM open. I can always send you uh, an invite so we can get another one or two people in here. But we do have two regular panel members that we're going to get to. And we're going to do the openings and we're going to get right into the show notes because there's a lot to discuss. Uh, first, we have a community member who exemplifies what it means to be a fantastic person on and off of social media. He's a chainsaw-cutting assassin. He's a huge Xbox fan, and he doesn't like scary games. Well, Zemi, I hate to tell you, welcome to Shocktober, because you're going to have a ton of them. But he will watch someone play a game and go through the door and get killed first, which I don't agree with, but that's who he is, and he owns it. Please <laughs> welcome. Welcome, my very good friend, Zemi Games. <laughs> Thank you so much, Boom. Everything that he said was true. Uh, and, it, and it sounds a whole lot better whenever he says it than I do. Uh, but <laughs> Thank you so much, Boom. Super excited to be here. We're a few men down, but I think the show is still going to be uh, fantastic as always. Uh, so thank you so much, Boom. Uh, listen, it's always great to uh, to hang out with you each and every week. It is definitely an honor, and uh, I actually really enjoy podcasting with you. And making his return, who has become a regular panel member, um, he is the creator of the awesome BitCloud Gaming YouTube channel. He's a diehard gamer, obsessed with gaming, and appreciates the great worlds, characters, and villains he meets in every game he plays. He's the host of the outstanding RGT podcast, co-host of the Gamer Couch podcast, and a permanent member of the hashtag Scumcast and hashtag Spectres. Please welcome BitCloud Gaming. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? How you guys doing? Good to see everybody in the chat. Like always, it's good to be back here every Friday. Um, shout out to Boom and Mr. Zimmy. We're definitely going to have to uh, hold the fort. It's <laughs> a lot to go over. Uh, that's happened this week for sure. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the show. Go ahead and hit that like button, hit that share button, get more people up in here. Let's have an awesome show as always. Well, listen, you know what? We are a few men down. This this original the original panel was supposed to uh, to have six people. Um, but at least, you know, we have three men here, uh, and uh, we all have something important to say. And, you know, there has been a lot uh, going on at Sony. So I, I want to open up the show talking about Sony because there is really a lot to sink our teeth into. Um, you know, GameIndustry.biz is a website that uh, is is a very credible website, and they have on many occasions uh, broken stories where you get to hear about a little bit more in depth of the business part of gaming. Something that a lot of people they don't want to be bothered with, and I understand that. It's very simple to you know just put on your favorite system, put on your favorite game, pick up your favorite controller, and just chill. And I think most gamers just want to do that they don't get involved in the so uh quote-unquote drama of the industry but as content creators and everybody on this particular panel is one we get into it a little bit more because we want to provide uh, a great show and great content for our channels for you guys the fans who are here um and uh you know 
did they posed an opinion piece and again remember folks it's an opinion piece of the author uh, you know i just not an opinion of double barrel gaming but i and when i do have my opinion on what's going on at sony you will certainly know it um the question that they posed was what is exactly going on with playstation and to be completely honest it is a fair question now when you look at all of the changes in management last week, there is definitely a call for concern. Now, I say for myself, because I'm a PlayStation 4 Pro owner, I'm going to be a PlayStation 5 owner day one, no, no questions asked. Um, so I'm going to go to um, BitCloud on this one. You know, the, the author, his opinion, uh, and one that I think all Sony fans should be asking, is... And this is what his question was. The industry is looking at Sony to see what's next for the console business. At the moment, Xbox is the only one providing all of the answers. Would you agree with that statement? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that because they kind of told you. Um, now, what's going on with PlayStation? Uh, we actually broke this down on the Gamer Couch podcast, broke it down. Um, basically, Foxy knows someone who's actually working uh, at Sony and who's actually going through the situation right now. What's going on with Sony is what's called globalization. Yes. Basically, what they're doing um, with Sony is that they're changing stuff around to get because uh, they're they're basically getting ready to make a huge change in their PR department and their marketing departments. So they're going to be much more aggressive in those fronts. So a, a few things are going to be changing with the business in terms of how they did it. Now, I don't know if you remember before we got State of Play, uh, they told you that they were looking for more and intuitive ways to get information to you and stuff like that. They're looking for different ways to doing this. They're going to be changing their entire uh, the way of their of going about it, basically, and they're going to be upgrading in that for that front. So that's what's going on with um, PlayStation. I mean, look, I I'm going to say this. Uh, like I have said on numerous Xbox Factor podcasts, when you or have to make a change, or you have to make you have to turn the ship. Unfortunately, it's very difficult. So, you know, Sony may not be as big, you know, financially or even as a company as Microsoft, but that does not mean that making these changes are not going to be confusing, uh, somewhat aggravating, uh, mm -hmm. for some people concerning. Um, I am, I am going to tell you that um, they understand what, where they they understand where they are as the market leader. Yeah, and they um they broke news on this too. Um, the European um the, yes, uh, I forgot the European part of Sony. It was Sony Europe, something like that stated that they didn't even know of uh, some of the stuff that was going to mm -hmm. change with yeah. them, and then it just was like they were handed this, you know, a piece of paper saying this is what we're going to be doing. Oh, by the way, we're also handing out uh, final notices for some people. Yeah, well, to, yeah, uh, we're gonna we're, we're actually uh, gonna we're gonna back end the story because originally this this the way I, the way I wrote this particular topic it was so large and because we had so many people on the yeah. panel <laughs> we were going to actually try and handle this in, in, in with a, like a two prong kind of approach meaning that we would go through the first half of the show notes and then come back around to everyone but because yeah. we're we're missing some folks uh we're going to have plenty of not assembled <laughs> we're going to have we're going to have some time to talk about it but that's okay because you know at the end of the day you know again life happens and we are still going to provide one hell of a, a a breakfast with boom today zemi you know i i want to get to you because the the next point that i came up with uh is uh is this you know in a year where you would expect sony to be basically setting out its strategy uh for widening the gaming audience it has acted conservatively and it is behaving more like a business worried about protecting its lead rather than going for the juggler and extending it would you agree with that yeah, I mean, I think that they're definitely on, on on like the hush hush. I think what they are doing with you know the um, 
with 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 all these uh, let goes is they're you know of course restructuring the company for something. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that is. I don't exactly know what their ideology and the direction that they're wanting to take the platform is in. But I, I think it's obvious that they are looking to restructure in a major way. Um, and you know, I and, and I think a lot of the confusion is just them being silent, them not wanting to show their cards to to anyone, and them you know trying to stay on the top of um of 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 the console game uh they were on top this entire generation i think that they want to be on top next generation historically it that usually never happens and so they are doing everything in their power restructuring the company staying hush hush not you know uh giving anyone a whole lot of information and i think that that's kind of been what their plan is has has comprised of for the you know these last couple of months you know back whenever xbox was saying yeah we're gonna go to e3 and playstation was like nah you know um i think that that's pretty much their entire strategy right now is to not is to make sure that no one necessarily knows exactly what they're doing so that they can come out in a big way whenever they release the ps5 yeah what are you um expecting the most though out of this whole thing what do you what do you think is going to happen at this point I really don't know. Um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm mostly, you know, an Xbox fan. I, I'm, you know, I don't get into the console war shenanigans or anything like that. I like PlayStation. I think that they probably have some of the best exclusives out on the market right now. Um, but, you know, I just don't really follow the company enough to really have an educated guess on what exactly they're trying to do. Um, mm-hmm. and, and in some ways, maybe they don't know what they're trying to do, you know? Um, you know, we, we know that they really like selling their you know, their first party exclusive games. We know that Xbox is adopting Game Pass and streaming technologies. It kind of seems like the industry is shifting the same way books are now read on a tablet. It seems that that's kind of the, you know, the direction that video games are going in, that video games will eventually be nothing, you know, but digital, uh, that they will eventually be streamed, that, you know, a lot of these services are opening up. And I think PlayStation is trying to figure out where exactly they fit in this entire, you know, in, in the direction that the industry is going i think that you know it's very concerning to them you know are they going to continue selling games like they have told their fans they are are they going to keep with the old traditional ways of um of monetizing um you know the sell you know the sales of games or are they going to adopt something similar to what xbox is going to do or are they just going to kind of be in the middle you know where they can still sell games but they're also giving consumers um something that they want yeah, it's definitely a lot of confusing messaging for sure. It just feels like uh, you know. It's funny you say that. You say you know you you, you said a particular line. It, uh, confusing messaging. Uh, it's something yeah. that has been, uh, in my opinion, uh, Microsoft's Achilles' heel. Uh, this this particular generation with the mixed messaging. And, yeah. um, you know, I understand that there's a lot going on. There's a lot of change going on. But this is, I, I got to be honest with you, it certainly seems, uh, it's fair to say, let me just say that, I think it's fair to say that it is certainly out of character for Sony to be in this kind of public disarray because, you know, the one thing I will credit Sony with, and I have said this numerous times on tons of shows, mine and other people's shows, uh, how how much I respect and uh, and uh, really marvel at the dominant um, PlayStation marketing, especially when it came to the marketing and their messaging with fans has always been, you know, you know, very, very clear, very concise, you know, very straight to the point. And in the last, you yeah. know, week or so, it, it it really hasn't. Not only that, though, um, you think about it with their uh, messaging, um, everything that was going on, like uh, basically Sony's attitude for the longest of this generation. Whenever Microsoft did a show, they would either try to counter in like their best way possible. You yes. notice that? Like they would yep. go, whether it be in presentation of games, for example. Yeah, I remember when we had the Uncharted Lost Legacy the, um, game shown off. They had that crazy water show with the show <laughs> and they went into gameplay, right? That? <laughs> yeah. All that stuff. Like uh, it seems like they're stepping back. This is on a few things. And they're actually very, very laid back right now, especially with the state of play. State of plays. Don't get me wrong. I, I understand what they're meant for, and we all understand what they're meant for, but it's not like we watch State of Plays for like a ton of insane announcements. We watch them for one or two. 
you know, when it comes to state of play, uh, little shows. And they're not like um, Nintendo Directs where they're more obviously engaging. Right. Everything. Yeah, they're it's, not, it's very corporate esque. Like I would agree with exactly. you there. It's kind of yeah. like it's like it's like they're reading from a bullet point. This is coming in May. This is coming in June. June. This may come in July. You know, PS Five. Hey, we'll talk about that later. And it's like that's the show. <laughs> and it's like wow, thank you. I felt so engaged by that awesome marketing and talk. That was so great. Like that's how I was been. But they have been like fall back on a lot for sure. A lot of things have been felt. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but you know, again, I I think uh, you know once they start to put people in positions, I I think that they will eventually, I I guess stabilize would be the best way to say yeah. it. But uh, you know, I I do have another uh, thing I want to throw at you, BitCloud. You know, with with this particular article that I pulled from GameIndustry.biz, uh, they they mentioned that there are no centralized clarity of vision, and that the regional teams have become frustrated by by uh, U.S. over by, by the U.S. oversight and sign yeah. off procedures. Uh, uh, and uh, it perhaps no 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 wonder senior names, whether that's Sean Layden or regional leads, are using this op- opportunity to move on. Do you think that uh, the people that have left Sony were frustrated in the direction that Sony is going to change the company? Well, more than likely, that probably was too. Like this might be, this might be a fifty-fifty with this. Because I remember I was talking to Salty about this. Um, basically, uh, the way Sony was doing about it and the way things were worded, it seemed like they were trimming the fat in terms of those who weren't necessarily like performing at their optimal efficiency the way they needed them to. Because you know, Sony right now can't afford any mistakes going into PlayStation Five. Yes, can't exactly. Mm-hmm. So they need everything to be like on point completely from start to finish so obviously i would say that probably would play a factor into what happened as well but another thing a lot of people are kind of missing with the situation with sony and this whole globalization of like you know the u.s version taking over the whole corporation or overseeing a lot of things each particular branch of sony whether it be sony europe sony london sony um japan asia whatnot each particular uh, division was responsible for X amount of games for their respective division. And this led to diversity and more games, you know? So if you're just going to look over everything, it does make me question, well, are you going to be trying, are you going to try to make these type of games for these particular markets? Let's, remember, not all games work for every single market, you know? Not every single style is going to affect everybody. It's not going to appease everybody. You know, people like JRPGs, but... Not everybody in the, in the Western territory is like JRPGs. You get what I'm saying? This is not something that we want to, to see. You know, each particular branch was responsible for their own thing. And that's how I do hope think I do hope that it will stay that way, that they will continue to do that. But this whole control thing, eh, it seems more likely the way they're just going to go about marketing. That's what I'm getting from this, everything. But again, um, it's only time to tell. You never know. You think you have the answers and then another story like drops in like the matter of like seconds you know that's how i feel i mean, I mean what you're saying makes a lot of sense uh but you know what i'd like to do is i, I want to come back around to everybody because like i said this is a this is a pretty uh loaded topic actually one of the uh, one of the bigger ones now uh in some in, in some positive news um uh they, they 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 dropped which i thought was very interesting and i think it's uh it's it's going to mean a lot of things uh, without them saying anything. They made it known on, on a random Tuesday, just like, hey, boy, you know, this is the information popping out there that the PlayStation 5 is going to have hardware based ray tracing. Now, that is a big deal. Uh, it is a big deal because we knew that Microsoft was doing it. Um, I don't know why. Um, Mark Cerny, uh, you know, explained it the way he did. And that, that man is a genius. There, you take nothing away from him. The reason why the PS4 it p- still p- plays games like God of War is because of his genius. Oh, by the way, if you didn't know. And, you know, obviously he is the brains behind the PlayStation 5. And I am, I'm expecting it to be a monster. There, there is not, I, Both systems are going to be incredible. Now, what, one is going to do something different than the other. And, and you, so you might say, well, what is that exactly? Well, in regards to the sound. Now, we know that uh, the, the Xbox currently, the Xbox, now that we play now, the X, 
it has Dolby Atmos, and that's I believe it's exclusive to the Xbox and the Xbox whatever Scarlet or whatever they're going to call it's going to have that. Uh, whereas yeah. uh, Sony is going 3D to audio. What's so, that? A 3D audio. It's called it's a 3, a 3D, yeah, the 3D audio. Or, yeah, the 3D audio. So they're gonna so there's there are gonna be some differences in regards to. Um, you know what? What exactly? You know, like little little things uh, in regards to the power. I think they're going to be very close. But when they revealed this, like I said on the random Tuesday, uh, I I think that this, and I want to get Zemi's opinion on this. You know, what what the, the the hardware that is being built for both consoles is expensive and it's new tech. And uh, I I, I want to say this right now. Uh, the, if if you're still on the fence that you think that the PS5 is going to come in at three ninety nine. The hardware-based uh, ray tracing has just confirmed that it's going to be $499. Uh, and I believe both consoles are going to be $499. And I think what's going to separate the two isn't going to be the hardware. I think it's both tough. hardware, I think it's going to be the games. I think yeah. it's going to come down to the games. Zemi, what are your thoughts on that regarding the... Um, the ray tracing being confirmed as instead of being software based, which would have been lesser than the Xbox Scarlet, do, uh, do do you think that the the confirmation of it being hardware based, meaning it's going to be powered by the in, the the internal hardware, do you think that that bumps up the price to launch at four ninety nine instead of three ninety nine? Yeah, I mean, you know, from like the very start of us talking about the price, uh, you know, we did like a show like uh, like a few months ago, I think, and we were kind of talking about what we thought the price was going to be, and and at that very moment, you know, uh, agreeing with you, like five hundred dollars, like there's no, I don't, I don't see how they're going to get under that five hundred dollar price tag, especially whenever you start thinking about the tariffs, which is just another subject oh, in, God, you know, yes. in of itself. But, you know, yeah, I, I don't see how they're going to have this amount of hardware and not be able to and, and be able to, you know, charge it less than four hundred dollars. I mean, obviously, I know they're buying in bulk. They get deals and stuff like that. But still, you know, if I was making a PC with the same exact specs, you know, it would cost definitely probably more than five hundred dollars. You know what I mean? So. I don't really understand how how anybody can really say that it's not going to be at least five hundred dollars, much less possibly more. Uh, with them, you know, uh, that terrorist thing really has it. me concerned, dude. Like that, with, with a, lot, the, a lot of people. You you know you you are one of the few content creators. I got to give you a lot yeah. of credit here, Zemi, that continually bring that up because it it falls out of my mind. Maybe because I'm old, but it falls out of my mind because. I don't want to. I don't want to buy a six hundred dollars system. I mean, of course, I'm going to, but that just means more times on the corner like a hooker, and I don't want to do it. So right. I'd rather it be four ninety nine. But uh, yeah, dude, that, that, I got that's gr- that's a really great point. Well, and another thing, though, too, especially with yeah. the PlayStation, is that you know we we heard that rumor or that leak, or maybe it was one hundred percent verified. I'm not exactly sure of like the validity, but we heard that they're thinking about releasing a PlayStation Pro alongside the base uh, PlayStation Five. And yes. if that's the case, yeah. then they're you know you know either the hardware is going to have to be a lot better for the Pro. Or, you know, there's going to have to be some price difference that that is reasonable, you know what I mean, to, to even be able to sell the pro. And so, I mean, with with all of these different scenarios that pop up, I, you know, I just I don't see how they're possibly going to be able to, to to sell a PlayStation 5 less than five hundred dollars. But I'm really excited about the technology. I mean, this is a huge jump um, getting us closer to what PC gamers, uh, you know, use every, you know, every day um you know pc you know playing on a pc is obviously gonna always be better you know i I don't ever really see the consoles catching up to that unless you know like streaming became a big wide um adopted thing uh but but i'm really excited about the, the the new technology that's going into these systems no, no doubt about that. Uh, BitCloud, I, I want to go to you because something dropped late last night uh, that I had to add at last minute uh, in, in the midnight hour, making sure that the, the sh- making sure the show was going to run fine. And, of course, it was a complete cluster F. Um, they, they Some information dropped about backwards compatibility that that's not good for PlayStation uh, uh, owners. Apparently, yeah. it turns out that Sony which is very, again, very shocking to me, is not quite sure 
what exactly they need to do and they don't have all of the details to make everything fully backward compatible and uh in a quote from um sony it says currently the dev team is putting all power on verifying whether they can secure a complete compatibility please wait for more information and this was told to famitsu wave uh and it was translated by um at bk2128 of twitter w- yeah. what what are your thoughts on this dude well, when I first read this, I immediately thought PlayStation 3. That was the issue. Because remember, PlayStation 3 used a completely different architecture that is completely tough to develop for. And the cost of the system would be even more because you'd have to put a cell processor into that pe- that console. Yep. Cell processor was ridiculously you know, hard to develop for. Remember, it took, it took forever for the multiplats to get on the PlayStation 3, at least up to par yes you know correct there was, there was always a problem the with them at launch yeah yep. remember how we had the comparisons the lighting looked better on the xbox 360 or performance would be a little better on this game or on, on playstation but mostly in the visual category a lot of the third party games looked washed out on the playstation 3 compared to the 360 in terms of that color scheme so it was tougher for that that's where I kind of saw when I read that. I was like, you know, I'm thinking PlayStation 3 is is the uh, is the problem with that. Because remember, um, you know, with the whole cell processor, I'm thinking, okay, maybe they'll just try to do streaming for PlayStation 3 games and everything else will more likely work with PS5. Like PS4 titles, we already know, that's a no-brainer. X86, PS5 is going to use an X86 architecture. So that makes sense. That'll work day one. PlayStation 2, again, um, that'd be cool. They threw that in there, that you can do that with PlayStation 2 and 1 games. And, of course, you still have the option for PlayStation Now to still download the games to the actual system and whatnot if you wanted to try PlayStation Now, which they changed the pricing of. So that's kind of what I saw about it. I wasn't necessarily, like, scared about this, this information at all. I wasn't scared about it. Well, real quick, I have to thank Enrique with the outstanding standing and very generous five dollar super chat and you don't know who Ray enrique is shame on you you should be subscribing to the basement radio arcade podcast one of my personal favorite shows to listen to he says americans have already paid an additional six billion in tariffs which is a 48 percent increase from 2018 china tariffs will hurt gamers yeah well this is this is the stubbornness of our president, and unfortunately, you know, I, I, this is not this is not turning into politics, folks. So don't, don't get nervous because we don't we don't you're not we, yeah we we, <laughs> we 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 don't talk about politics on here because politics is dirty and it's gross. And this is a gaming show, but yeah, tariffs are a real thing, and I hope that they can figure this out because man, oh man, if a if a console. Is is coming in at four ninety nine. Understand that they are really pennies away from taking a loss. Both companies, not just Microsoft, not just Sony, both companies. And if these tariffs come into play, man, it is going to it's going to be a real Debbie Downer, if you will, when next next November is going to it was is supposed to be a celebration for gaming. And I really want to kind of just drive that. You know, I, I really I, I don't really enjoy saying this. But I want to say it because if you are a content creator, you know some of the uh, messages that you get are not usually very nice. Now, for the to be fair, no one really you know attacks Boom, but I've gotten some some really nasty ones, and I, I kind of just want to put this disclaimer out there. You know, when we talk about Sony uh, on this show, we're talking about sh- Sony as gamers, and that goes for Nintendo and that goes for Xbox. This 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 particular topic is in no way, shape, or form an attack on PlayStation or its fan base because, quite frankly, I'm a fan base. And I I got news for you, and I'll get on my soapbox and say this. I'm probably a bigger Sony fan than a lot of these uh, road warriors that make trouble in the community because I buy every first-party game, and I buy the collector's edition, which I do unboxings on my channel for. So if I didn't like Sony, I wouldn't support them and wouldn't have everything Sony. VR, um, the PlayStation Pro, uh, uh, God of War custom console. So if you're in the chat and you're new, I say welcome, because we love everybody here. This is an open show. Everyone is welcome, no matter what console you play on. 
but don't be a d bag and start messaging me about me about being a, being one way or the other. I'm a gamer. I support all three consoles, and I've been very clear about that. But look, guys, this is this has been a great topic, and well, I'm going to close out the topic with, and then I'll get you guys closing statements on it. Is as a Sony fan, uh, right now it's some real rocky. Uh, water. Now, we are, again, I said this uh, a couple of days ago on Primetime Gaming, uh, we are 13 months removed from the launch of the next console. So there is time for Sony to kind of get their ducks in order. And I expect them to do that. Uh, I have no idea what their launch games are going to be. I I think there's going to be a lot of PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 games, you know, meaning that it's going to go back and forth. Like, we're going to get uh, Ghost of Tsushima. I think it's going to be closer to the launch of the PS5, so it's going to be a dual launch. I think you're yeah. going to get uh, a rebranding of sorts of The Last of Us 2 with some extra features for the PlayStation 5. Graphics, you know, be able to give it a graphical boost. Oh, dude, that's that's going to act like a... T- more than likely, that's going to act like a tag demo at this point for PS5. Yo, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no doubt about it. And already, I mean, listen, we've seen the we've seen what it looks like, and it's already a freaking masterpiece. And they're claiming that they're prioritizing the current gen, like the, um, the base yes. PS4, not yes. the Pro. So that looks that good on a base. That's Could you incredible. Imagine? But- See that? Yeah, that's what. That's what I'm. I'm not. I, I. I'm. I'm concerned as a as a content creator, which is why we talk about these stories. But as a gamer. I would like to see some clarity, but because Sony has been notoriously so good, I'm expecting them to kind of, like I said, get their ducks in order. Anything you'd like to add, BitCloud, before we get on out of here to the next topic? Ah, uh, dude, I mean, like you said, the updates are going to be great. We still got rumors. Oh, I, I could have sworn they, though, some of my subs are telling me that they confirmed Ape Escape might be coming oh, to PlayStation great. 5. So, I mean, there's a lot to look forward to, mm-hmm. but... Probably the most insane thing was that new controller details. Yes. Oh, you know what? Talk and about that for a second because yeah, the uh, the developers, are, the, the, the third-party devs are just now getting that, and that's pretty damn interesting. Yeah, they have these things called hefty triggers. Now, for those of you who are diff- the difference between hefty triggers and the triggers that Microsoft has, which are called, um, what are they called? Not hefty triggers. They were called, not vibration <sighs> triggers. They were called. I know what you're talking about, and it's on the tip of my tongue. Feedback. feedback. Yes, the feedback, feedback uh, triggers. Yes. So, now, the difference between the feedback ones and the actual hefty triggers, the feedback ones are pretty much whatever setting they put them in, guys. That's what it is for the game. When it ships out, it's done. Head the triggers can be finely tuned with updates with games. Wow. So that's how crazy good they can make this. Now, what I said on uh, I said in a, in a video and I kind of pieced it together. I'm like, yo, this can play a good factor in PlayStation VR. Because remember, Sony's making another PlayStation VR headset. So Sony could be working on a new controller. There were patents for where they slide on your hands and they use like cameras to track your fingertips. I would not be surprised if they fit that type of functionality in those controllers. But to go to the base PS, PS5 DualShock 5, dog, have the trigger sounds so sick, especially if you guys are playing like Resident Evil 2 oh Remake. Imagine Resident Evil 2 Remake remastered for PlayStation 5 or redone for PlayStation 5, and you guys can hear Mr. X, big heavy footsteps up top, right? And you're thinking, okay, he's far away, but then you feel it in the controller that he's around the corner. That's immersion. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, listen, I, 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 I currently support PlayStation VR. I, I'm, I absolutely adore it. Uh, I, I, I was day one adopter uh, when uh, the, they released the updated uh, H2, H, HDMI pass through the following uh, Christmas season. It was the gift mm-hmm. I bought myself. Uh, so I have the, I have the current one. I, I don't use it every day, but I do absolutely love VR, and I am beyond stoked to see what they do for the next gen vr uh zemi real quick is there anything you'd like to close out with your particular statement for this sony based topic yeah i mean so you know i think sony has a lot on their plate um you know the fans are expecting a lot they you know they've been leading this entire generation the fans are really expecting sony to 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 bring out everything and i think sony has a lot on their plate and so i i i kind of mentioned this last uh last um last week but you know i just i kind of want to mention it again that sony they 
they have so much pressure being put on them, not only to, you know, uh, to, to improve on the, you know, the PS4 when making the PS5, not only with these tariffs, not only with getting the price right, not only with, you know, developing, um, you know, all these, you know, fantastic games. They just, they, they have so much put on them and they're, you know, it, it, it's just really, really kind of hard um for you know for that company right now especially with you know all of us wanting to hear what exactly they're coming out with and what exactly they're doing um so but but at the end of the day i i do have faith in them i think that they will succeed the way that they did um you know this generation and yeah that's that's pretty much it no, that's a great yeah, point and, um, let me add uh, one more thing here. Uh, sure. Remember, uh, Antonio said, uh, the, doesn't the Switch have the same thing? Now, you guys remember when the Switch, they first showed off, he was like shaking it. It was making the noise of like an ice cube in the glass. Yes. That's yes. technically not the same. Um, what it is is actually an improved rumble, but it's not necessarily the exact same Sony's doing. Because, well, again, this this is a, uh, what they're doing with theirs is that they can legit be upgraded. So, for example, if they want to be more sensitive, when you're pulling a bow or more, you know what I'm saying? They'll they'll adjust this stuff based on your feedback from the game. How many guys? How many times you guys heard stuff like the controls feel floaty in games this gen? That's basically what these these uh, these can triggers and, and uh, things are going to be doing. They're going to be fixing those. Yeah, it, it's fly. it's. Listen, look. All I'm going to say is this: graphically, technically, and everything else that goes with new consoles we're going to get in spades with both with both the ps5 and the scarlet it's in a very very exciting time first of all 2020 in regards to games is already shaping up to be and i keep saying this every year you know it's funny my my friend i know this is going to be very nerdy i i'm I'm probably going to win some cool points for this Uh, i have a bunch of friends my brother neo mental who's might might be in the chat um, um, we get together with two of our other friends that uh, we uh, we not only grew up with, but we worked with in Funko Land many, 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 many moons ago. Some people don't even know what Funko Land is. It was before; it's pre GameStop. Um, and we get together each and every year, and we do. Now that I have a show, we actually do a live uh, Game of the Year show, just the four of us. And then we go out to dinner, we hang out, we play games, we just reminisce on the old times. It, it, it's, it's super nerdy, but it's something that we do. And every year that we do this show, is like, my God, wasn't that the greatest year in gaming? And I thought 2019 was going to be that year locked in. Like the two thing, When you talk about 20, uh, 2007, you're like, wow, that was a year for gaming. That's how I thought 2019 is, and I still do. But then when you look at 2020... You you have the you, you might have three consoles launching because there's still rumors of a place to, uh, of of a Switch Pro that still might come out. We don't know, so you got three possible three consoles, and you got all of these games. You got The Last of Us Two, you got Halo Infinite, Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, I don't even have to go on. If those are the three games that launch in all of the year, we're good as gamers, right? Um, but it's going to be an exciting time. And I, I, I really like the fact that both companies are going to have a clean slate. Microsoft's, Microsoft understands what they did wrong. Sony knows what they did right. And it's really going to be about the games, games, games. But I, I, I want to move on to a topic now. And this is, this is one of those times where I say what's fair is fair. Uh, some big news happened uh, with uh, someone leaving Microsoft, and it's a big name. And because I've talked about Sony, I thought it was absolutely only fair that on this particular show, which of course I expected six people, <laughs> but we have three and we're going to make it work, uh, that Mike Yabara, who was the corporate v- VP of Microsoft, is moving to new and unknown endeavors after being with the company for 20 years and uh and the, the, again the question that i'm gonna have to pose to everyone in the chat and and of course i'll, I'll get to the the two panel members that i have uh is mm. this going to be a problem now twitter was buzzing on wednesday afternoon when xbox bad boy himself mike yabara announced his official 
uh, uh, officially, he was officially leaving. Now, he did this, and I thought he did it in a classy way. He went on to public uh, social media, and he announced on Twitter, from his official Twitter account, uh, something that I've been waiting Sean Layden to do. Uh, and I'm not sure why he hasn't, because I really dig Sean Layden. I thought he would have come out and at least did a press statement or something or did an interview explaining it. But he's been laying low. And, and you know what? We don't know. We don't know why. But Mike made this statement. He said, after 20 years at Xbox, it's time for my next adventure. Uh, it's been a great ride at Xbox. The future is bright. Thanks to everyone at Team Xbox, I'm incredibly proud of what we've accomplished, and I wish you the best. More soon on what's next for me. Super excited. And then he finishes it off with an, uh, one additional statement. Uh, most, uh, uh, most importantly, I want to thank all of you fellow gamers and our great fans for all the support. Keep gaming, and I hope to see you online soon. Now, Mike received loads, and I mean pages, of best wishes. Uh, you'll be missed, and it's been great working with you. Responses on his departure. Now, everyone in, X in the Xbox community, including myself, was really taken aback by this. Now, in 2014, if you don't know who Mike Yabara is, he was promoted to the uh, a VP role as Corporate Vice President of Programming Management for the Xbox platform. And in 2017, right after the Phil Spencer promotion, he began the role he is departing right now, handling Xbox Live, Xbox Game Pass, and Mixer, um, and wow, that is really, really big uh, shoes to fill. Now, there's no word yet on who's in line to replace Mike Ybarra in response to the query on the matter from GameIndustry.biz, which is, of course, one of my go-to sites. Microsoft issued the following statement. In uh, Mike Ybarra's 20 years at Microsoft, he has had an incredible impact from shipping multiple editions of Windows to creating AAA games to drive our gaming platform and services. Uh, services. We thank him for his contributions and wish, wish him the best of luck. BitCloud, what are your thoughts on this movement and could it potentially be problematic to find a replacement for someone like Mike Yabara? You know, the crazy thing is, uh, when this broke, I was actually playing games, and then people told me in our Discord that he left, and I was like, wow, I bet Twitter is uh, insane. I go on Twitter. And it was it was pretty interesting. But one thing I can say about um, Mike Yabara, right, and I can't say this for many executives, the dude was at least open to talk to fans. He actually came on people's shows uh, to give you a little insight on what's going on. You know, that's cool. He, he did that type of stuff. Um Regardless of whether you agree with the direction of Xbox or not, I mean, I thought he meant well. I really do. I don't think any executive really means bad for the future of their company. They just see the money and they want to, you know, improve it for sure. But, um, you know, him leaving, it's not necessarily, I don't think it's doom and gloom. Because remember, look at Sony. Sony lost, uh, pretty much, he's, he, he pretty much, this, um, Sony lost like six executives. Yes. Yes, you know, they along six. a bunch of uh, we didn't talk about it, but there were a lot of layoffs. I mean, a ton of yeah. of layoffs as well. So yeah, yeah, both. So you know, uh, with Sony, well, Sony losing six either through their you know them retiring or leaving, and of course the layoffs, and of course uh, Microsoft had a few layoffs as well. But you know, with six layoffs, of Sony, you know, and everything, I don't really see that much of a big deal. It just tells me what it, what this is basically telling me is that next gen is clearly going to be different. And either people are just disagreeing on what they want to do or they just figure the time is, is right to leave because they're they're so either into the old way of doing it, you know, the original way of doing it. And now, they do, don't you th do you think do you think see that's a that's a really pretty intelligent point that you're making. Do you think that 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 particular because you, 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 when, when you say it, it seems like it's a broad stroke, I meaning you're talking about multiple companies. But more yeah. specifically, do you think that Mike Ybarra had a way that he maybe want a direction he personally wanted to go in and maybe microsoft was like no that's not the way we're going do you, you get know, that feeling ironically, ironically i kind of do because that's kind of the feeling that i had with sean layton and 
the uh, Jim Ryan situation. Remember, mm-hmm. remember, Sean Layton wanted a, a, an exclusive for PlayStation every quarter. Yes, he did. So that's four games. Uh, Jim Ryan, on the other hand's new philosophy and his philosophy as of late has been, well, we need a bunch of exclusives every year. You know what I'm saying? So stuff like that. So I don't know if, if there was just a difference in terms of like trying to, you know, uh, manage funds or whatnot, the way they're trying to go about PlayStation 4 going into five or whatever. But there were just so there's so many different conflicting stories of this, you know, what's going on. But it could very well be the difference. You know, some people might actually want to still support game pass right and others probably want to do the original way where they just drop you know game sixty dollars you know and don't have to worry about the service or maybe they don't want to have it where it's on game pass day one and change it up and you know have it be on there at a later time you you never really know what's going on and this is where you know the speculation comes into play you know well we never know the full story until later on yeah i noticed the whole situation with playstation 3 we just now found out the full full scope a PlayStation 3 back in 2016. And that was an interview with uh, Mark Cerny where he actually confirmed that, yeah, the PlayStation 3 didn't uh, really have a cell processor. The PlayStation 3 was actually a beefier PlayStation 2. And we didn't know this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They just filled that in later. He's like, well, yeah, you know, I told these guys, yeah, the cell processor is great. You can get X amount of frames, right? And that was the main thing. They showed you frames or not frames. They showed you uh, visual fidelity for what it was and the cost. But he had no idea it was going to be 600 bucks. Yeah. So yeah. we we already know what happened there. That's <laughs> what the $600 price. Well, yes, we certainly do. And that's unfortunately... Um, <laughs> It's 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 storied history for a lot of reasons, and I I hope that we don't uh we ever see that again. But it's 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 gonna certainly be, and, and you know, and it's funny because you know we we you know we were talking pregame about how there are certain folks, you know, certain parts of the community that that, that we like to stay away from the, the 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 darker side, the the more negative side of the uh, gaming community that looks to. Uh, pile on the rabbit, and if, you know, if you're a younger person in the chat, I apologize. You don't even know what that is. You may not even. That's from a that's a Bugs Bunny <laughs> reference, and only if, only if you're an old bastard like myself, would you probably understand what that means. Sammy probably is like, "What the hell is he talking about? Who's Bugs Bunny?" <laughs> <laughs> what up, Doc? <laughs> um, but um, this is this is going to be. Um, you know, the, the minute Mike left, of course, the 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 internet exploded because you know when someone big leaves, it's going to be a big news. And uh, there were, of course, the, uh, the the naysayers about how, well, now Xbox is doing the same way Sean Layden was doing. Well, Sean Layden was a much bigger piece of the puzzle than Mike Ybarra right. is. I want people to understand that. Yes, he was a VP of very important parts of yep. Microsoft, meaning like Xbox Live uh, and, of course, Game Pass, which he was the rah-rah guy for yep. Xbox Game Pass. Uh, and, and um, you know, I don't um, have any degrees, but if Microsoft is listening and you kind of want to promote someone from the ground floor up, I can always <laughs> take his job because I have been selling the shit out of Game Pass for you on my Xbox show. So maybe bring me in for an interview. I think you're going to dig me. I have a mohawk, <laughs> so I'm hip. Um, yeah. But uh, Zemi. Sean, um, oh, my no, no, no. Continue. No. Continue. Uh, what were you going to say about Sean Layden? Oh, no, I was gonna say Sean. Remember, Sean, like you said, he was a bigger piece. Well, again, yeah, that's true. Because remember, we did, we just a lot of people are just now finding out about Sean not too long ago, and that was back in 2016 D3 with the orchestra and whatnot when he first started coming out on stage or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, he was a little we, nervous back Sean's then, been, but he's yeah, been good. Sean, he's Sean got better. Was, uh, yeah, Sean was um was behind the scenes for thirty yes. years. Yes, and that's what people don't understand. He was back with this company before, like back when it was in beta stage, mm-hmm. <laughs> and before PlayStation even blew up. He was there with the first prototype. So that's how big Sean was for PlayStation. Just like Andrew House and Andy House was there at in the in the time. You know, they were there from the good to the overwhelming bad to the ridiculously triumphant. I think we all can say this gen has been ridiculously triumphant. If we were to compare it to PlayStation 3, right? It's a big triumph. So he, he was there from there. Uh, Mike, again, Mike Yabar, I can kind of say the thing, the same thing about Mike, because you didn't really hear that much about Mike last gen. I don't I don't remember as much, right? Mike kind of was behind the scenes and then he just came out as well and then you know became that public voice and figure. So, you know, it's just people don't even understand this. You these people are bigger than what you think they are, 
But at the same time, I don't think, um, you know, they're affecting the business as well as them leaving at this current time. Because, you know, again, uh, the market changes. And when the market changes, you need different management. You need different strategies. You need different ways of going about it. You know, yeah. and one thing a lot of you guys need to keep in uh, into perspective, whether you're talking about Sean Layton or hell, even Mike Yabara, both of these guys are leaving with a hell of a lot of stock in yeah. both these companies. They're leaving stack. They're not they're not upset about anything. Well, they're, not, anything, they're, they're they certainly not going to be hurting for or hurting in the financials. I mean, they're 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 yes. they're they're holding big positions, which which carry very large salaries. And of course, they have stock options like you were referring to. And, you know, they're, yep. they're, they're they could logistically re- like a guy like Sean Layden. Uh, uh, which would, of course, you know, I, I said it. I, I said it. You know, of course, I think everyone would say would like to see how oh, would be great for him to be working at Microsoft. But uh, he's been doing this for so long. I, I think he's in the in the process of in, in his life that he could actually retire and retire comfortably. And yeah, I think Mike could do as well. Yeah, he's fifty eight years old. I don't know how old Mike is, but Mike's a so younger dude is, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Well, yeah, for sure. Well, because you know, Sean is fifty eight. Yes. He's about to be 60. So he's at that age where I'm pretty sure he wants to hit that golf course. <laughs> so he wants to uh, retire <laughs> and definitely you know, sit back and enjoy whatever else he has time. And remember, I got to think about the sacrifices these guys made, have made for Sony in terms of family time, in terms of salary and pay cuts. Remember, Sony went play- back on PlayStation 3. Dudes were willing, executives and employees were willing to take massive, um, you know, massive. Cut, massive cut putt. Yes. Remember that? You remember that? Boom? Yep, I they sure do. Willing. To take massive price or not price, but um, pay cuts for Sony to keep them going because they love their jobs and they love Sony that much. This is the type of dedication that Sony has with their employees. And again, the fact that he hasn't said anything, it is very strange. But at the same time, I don't think he wants to create any unnecessary drama. He knows social media. He has seen it with his own eyes, you know, with the shows. I remember Deuce said he was a terrible presenter at the start. When it came to 2016, all of a sudden, to like two years later, they absolutely loved the guy, saying this dude is the is the best. He's like, you know, he's he's gum, he's gotten real suave in the way he goes about his uh, <laughs> talking about the games. But you know, I, I I even said this when he first took over. I was like, listen, I love the guy, I like what he does on stage, but he's not Jack Trent. Jack Trent, Jack right Jack, right. Jack is a man. He's a personality, a isn't he? That's a go, man. He, yeah, when he, he when he comes out and he has the, he just has that presence. You know, like that presence where you just respect and you want to listen. You don't want to talk over, kind of like your grandfather. If he's giving you a lecture, you just want to listen. You don't want to, you know, what I'm saying you don't want to talk over him because like he has that type of a knowledge. It's like, yeah, talk. I'm here. I'm listening. That's kind of how uh, Jack Trenton's uh, Jack uh, Trenton's uh, presence was when it, everything. And Sean, Sean's good, but you know, again, I don't, I, just, I never saw him as a replacement for Jack. I don't think really there will ever be a replacement for Jack. But I know you've seen Twitter a lot. People have been asking for uh, Sean's position or at least a presenter type of thing. I would love to see Ikumai Nakamura oh. on a PlayStation, uh, PlayStation show and her doing a presenting. I would like to see something like that. That'd be cool if she can do the shows. Yeah, I mean, why not? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you want somebody uh, that's energetic up there, right? You know, well, yeah, I mean, listen, I, like I said, a lot of people, I, I like Sean. Uh, he's going to be missed. Uh, I really, you know, when when he was up on the stage, he might not have been a Jack Trenton, right? Yeah. But I will give him credit that his passion and his excitement for the fans that were in front of him cheering made him a better presenter. It, it, exactly. really yeah. it really did. It really, really, really did. Orchestra entrances. Remember the orchestra entrances? Remember how he just like he he kind of like was was stuck. Everybody kept saying Sony, Sony. You know, everybody yeah, yeah, was yeah. like looking. <laughs> he took it. He took that to heart. That that was good. So technically, you, if y'all want to take something from uh, Sean Lane's departure, y'all made him a better person. Y'all made him a better uh, presenter. Sure, it was good. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Zemi, I want to get your opinion on this, dude. Um. You know, obviously, Mike Ibarra holds a very, very high position within Microsoft. Uh, again, we've like we discussed a few seconds ago, it may not be on the level of, let's say, a short and laden. Um, but at the same time, he's still responsible for two major services within the Xbox brand, two of the money making services, OPS, by the way, and of course, Xbox Live. And, uh, of course, the, the ultra-popular and very, very uh, uh, 
you know, ultra popular again, uh, Xbox Game Pass, uh, which uh, we have uh, we just found out in the story that um, the uh, they had three million downloads of a particular game that just got into Game Pass, and 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 in fact, uh, it was uh, it w- it did so well there that the game sold more, sold extra copies on the PlayStation Four. Uh, which means that, which tells me that there, there are more than three million uh, people. There's probably three times that because three million Game Pass subscribers downloaded this one particular game. So then, so it's got to be millions and millions of of, of subs because you're not going to get a hundred percent, you know, uh, ratio. Um, but when you when you heard that Mike Yabara was leaving, what were your for, your first thoughts of this? But more specifically. Who do you think they're going to get to fill his shoes? Because they're pretty big shoes to fill. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, like, whenever all this stuff happened with Sean Layden, you know, like, I don't know, like, I, you know, I play more Xbox, I research more Xbox, you know, my whole channel is more directed towards Xbox. So it had more of, I guess, like an impact for me than whenever Sean Layden left. Um, And, you know, so... Because, you know, I kind of knew who uh, Mike Ybarra was a little bit more. I watched a lot of his streams on Mixer. And that's one thing that 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 the, that I'm kind of, I don't know, bothered about more than anything. Is that Mike Ybarra was just so public and so transparent yes. with the community. Yep. Um, you know, he, he live streamed on Mixer, you know, a couple of times a week. He was a great guy to like talk to and, 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 you know, all sorts of different things. And it just kind of changes the, the dynamic of it because, you know, whenever you hear Sean Layden left, okay, you know, most people probably never, you know, watched him, you know, every single week on Mixer, you know what I mean? It was like a fan of his content. When as like, whenever Mike Yabara announces that it has more of like an emotional impact because, you know, I didn't know the guy in the sense that I, you know, that I ever talked to him like in person or anything like that shook his hand, but I knew him as a content creator and I knew him, you know, from, from a bunch of stories that, you know, you know, I heard in the community and, and, and whatnot. Uh, and he had a huge, huge crucial role with Xbox. You know, a lot of like, uh, from my understanding, a lot of like the new updates that come out like every single month on Xbox, he had a big, you know, uh, a big part in. Uh, you know, he had a huge part in the Game Pass and, you know, just a huge part in the new direction that Xbox decided to take after, you know, the the PR, the dark days of, of 2013. Let's just say that, right? <laughs> so... You know, it, it is a huge loss in my mind um, as far as why did he leave or something like that. Um, you, you know, a lot of people, whenever they see a, a high figure uh, leaving, you know, a VP, a CEO, like the first thing that they think of is doom and gloom that, you know, something major happened and he decided to like, leave. Yeah, they fired him. Mike has been fired. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so chances, chances are, you know, I know that he he is a huge fan of PC gaming. Right. Yes. He, which which always was like surprising to me because, you know, he, he's the VP for, you know, X, you know, Xbox Live and all that different stuff. And he works for Xbox, but he's like this huge PC gaming fan playing PUBG and all sorts of things on the PC. So it wouldn't surprise me if he isn't going to try to get into a field like that. You know, he's been at Xbox. He's been at Microsoft for 20 years. Maybe he wants to expand out. Maybe he wants to go do something else, which, you know, isn't shocking in the least bit. You know, if you were working at McDonald's for 20 years, flipping a burger, I bet you would just die for that job at the bank. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think that, you know, he got kicked out or or anything like that. He had a major disagreement with anyone. I, I don't really think that that's probably what happened. I think he just probably wants to move on, do something else. Uh, you know, you know, I, I, I believe he's like 40 years old. I think his kids are, you know, more grown up. Maybe he wants to you know, go on some vacations or something like that. Maybe he just wants to go into like an early retirement or drive his sports car around or something, you know? Listen, it's I, okay. It's, listen, I retired at 44, so I understand yeah. that if you, and I, I'm not financially set like Mikey Barra, but I still retired anyway. Uh, and yeah, maybe maybe he wants to kind of, I mean, he did say that there's some exciting things happening. So that kind of tells me that he is not done necessarily with the industry, but you're right, Zemi. That's a great point that he just yeah. might want to just relax now. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think that's that that's pretty much what it is. He either wants to relax or he wants to just try something new. Um, but as far as who's going to fill his position, I really have no idea. I I have faith in 
and you know the the higher ups, Phil Spencer, the you know the people in charge of Xbox and Microsoft to find someone suitable to fill his shoes. But you know, for for the, just the way I look at it, I think it's going to be a you know a hard pair of shoes to fill. Yeah, I agree. But I think that, I, I think that they're gonna they're they're gonna find somebody suitable. As as to who I think they're gonna promote, I have no idea. I don't um, have any idea, and I, and I keep I my ear to the I don't floor. know the hierarchy of of Microsoft. You know, I mean, Phil Spencer. You know, he he you know he worked for Microsoft before he was promoted. Uh, Mike Yabara did as well, but they may take a vice president from someplace else and 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 put him on that. So I, I don't really know who exactly they're gonna have fill the shoes, but I, I I think that they're gonna you know find somebody suitable. Yeah, real quick, I yeah. just have to say a big thank you to uh, PCMR in the chat. Three million downloads for Oxenfree, which if you have not played, is an amazing amazing title so thank you for the uh the help on that i see that crispy bomb is here in discord crispy do you hear us and can we hear you can you hear me now yes we can hear you now dude welcome to the show what a cluster f it has been from the beginning but it's great to have you on dude uh sorry you got in late but listen uh i'll go to you immediately because you've been in the chat and i want to thank you so much for still hanging out and, and, and trying to get in here because you know we've had you on before you do great every time you're on your and uh, you know it's, if people don't know he's on coffee casuals and consoles he's also on retro renegades a great addition to that uh, uh, you know, show that's run, of course, by our resident artist in uh, one of the best artists in the business, J Dubs, aka the Graphic God, who is probably in the chat somewhere. Uh, Crispy, uh, what are your opinions on the departure of Mike Yabara? And c- do you think that this could maybe cause a bit of a stir going into next generation for the Microsoft platform? Well, look, we're, let's be honest that, you know, there's going to be uh, a big shoes to fill. You know, I mean, he, he is in the community. He's he's really vocal. You know, we need to realize that 20 years is a long time in a company. I mean, I, I've got 13 in, in my company, and I'm, I'm kind of getting sick of it. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, to be honest, you know, he seems more of a PC gamer. Um, I could see him taking maybe a, a small hiatus, you know, you know, hitting the hitting the wave somewhere, as we like to say, and uh, you know, just enjoying life for a little bit. I mean, I'm sure he's he's made plenty of money and saved a ton of it. So, you know, we'll see where he where he goes from here, and that could be a tall tale sign of what actually happened. But I think it was just you know more or less a uh, you know he felt that he needed to find something else. I mean, it's it's certainly possible, and like you know, we'll we'll, we'll never know. I mean, because uh, all I mean, when it comes to corporate behavior, uh, they they usually keep that. I mean, someone leaving is going to be public information because it's a publicly traded company. Um, but at the same time, um, it's it you know the inner workings of exactly why Mike is leaving. I mean, it may not be notorious, it, it you know, or nefarious. It it might just simply be like you said. I've been here twenty years. And my kids are grown up, and I kind of want to maybe just drive down the coast with in my very expensive convertible, and kind of let my hair out and just game and not worry about anything. And that's very that's very possible. Uh, we again same thing for Sean Layden. We don't know why he left, and he, again he was he was in Sony for thirty years, so maybe it's just time that he's like, well, like uh, Big Cloud was saying, I just want to hit the links a little bit more than I've been doing, and I think I've earned it. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. but yeah, Mike, it, Mike's still partying age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he is a party dude, and he is the resident bad boy from <laughs> from Microsoft. So, so there you go. I mean, you know, he probably wanna he probably got some supermodels he wanna try to hit on. Listen, I, I I I applaud it. Uh, I am gonna say this. First of all, I want to thank the chat for you guys. We have almost 150 people watching live. That is the most in a very, very non-prize giving uh, uh, show in a very long time. And despite having some technical issues with Discord and OBS and effing YouTube, we have uh, we have this many people watching. And I, I hope everybody is enjoying it because it really brings me a ton of joy to do these shows each and every week and uh, i i just i'm blown away by how many people are here but uh, i w- i want to move on to the next story and you know this is a story and slow-mo 
who is one of my favorite content creators. I say this all the time. He's a good dude. If you're not sub to this man's channel, shame on you because he talks about stuff that no one else is talking about. He's just thought-provoking content. And, of course, he is on the... Uh, he's a main cog at the Basement Radio Arcade podcast. And um, in a story that uh, was brought to my attention by that man, Slow Mo Backslap, right there, and uh, I, I, I've been watching this. Uh, Jamie Moran has also been beating this drum. And unfortunately, I found out from Jamie, his computer will not turn on. That's why he couldn't be here. So he apologizes. We could try and get him on either next week or the following week after that. Uh, and in a story that no other podcast has been talking about and absolutely should be, the new title, Disintegration, is looking absolutely like a triple a monster and it's being brought to us by the halo co-creator marcus leto who is the studio lead at this new company v1 interactive now i pulled this story from one of my personal favorite sites uh, uh, uh windows central and i'm gonna say this at first glance this integration may look like a Destiny clone. Some might even say it resembles Bioware's Anthem, though it's safe to say that Disintegration will be looking to walk to the beat of its own drum, and I'm happy to report, so far, so good. Now, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, head over to YouTube and just type in Disintegration Gameplay Trailer. And I gotta be honest with you, I think you are going to be blown away now as we know guys sci-fi shooters make up a large portion of an already packed genre and v1 interactives disintegration will need to do things that its predecessors did but they need to do it better and though when one of its co-creators are responsible for the outstanding Halo franchise, well, that's a kind of pedigree that makes me have very high hopes for the new IP, which is launching uh, uh, in 2020. Now, we don't have a, sp a, a particular release window. We know that it's coming in 2020. Now, if you're interested, this integration will feature a dedicated, and this is important, single-player campaign alongside three multiplayer modes, offer offering the players something to do uh, on both fronts, very similar to Dest uh, Bungie's Destiny franchise that just saw their first DLC launch post Activision, and it appears to be a big success for them. Um, disintegration takes place in the near future in a world ravaged by a climate crisis, overpopulation, food shortages, and, and basically it's a global pandemic. The, the, uh, now, the, uh, these ripped from the, from the headline problems have led to, in -game, to an in-game society to collapse. And to save humanity, scientists transplanted people's brains, seems crazy, into robotic armatures uh, known as, uh, known as a pro the process is known as integration. And, uh, you know, again, the story sounds very unique. Very, very different than what you'd get in Destiny. Very different from what you're getting in Anthem, where you're actually just playing, you're, you're climbing into a mech, where you are actually the mech. Uh, BitCloud, I, I want to go to you first on this. Did you get a chance to take a look at the trailer I sent, and what are your thoughts on what you saw so far? I mean, it looks good. I just, uh, like like I said, man, um, <laughs> I try not to get super, super hyped for a lot of games nowadays, especially after the whole Watch Dogs debacle. So <laughs> I just want games to look. I just want games to play. It, it looked the way they're advertised. That's all. That's all there is. Uh, what they showed, it looks good. Uh, hopefully, um, it blows us away. Definitely. I mean, it, it, I mean, when you when you say that the the co creator, not 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 a, not a, not a coder, not an artist, the co creator of Halo, uh, who has obviously that that's that's a pretty inc a pretty stout portfolio to put on the front of your box right you know what i'm saying when you when you're going to start advertising this do you have um confidence 
from Leto that it's going that he's not going to fall into these uh, these pitfalls, so to speak, of development and uh, make the same mistakes that Destiny has made in the past, and now they fixed those apparently with the new DLC and yeah. the mistakes that Anthem unfortunately continues to make. Yeah, I mean, I remember we had a conversation like this similar. Well, we all were, you know, in the past. But you remember with Cliffy B and he made Law. law yes, 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 yes. We all we all thought he would, and he couldn't possibly. I mean, to fall into any gripe, you know, especially after the gears. We thought, you know, he was set for another masterpiece with gears, and it's like uh, he fell into gripes. I'm um, hard to really say. You know, it's kind of like the best way to really go about this is to wait for the first official official like gameplay. Yeah. You know? That's like the only way you do it because you know it's hard because you know CGI trailers show you stuff right that might seem possible until you get it and it's like that wasn't really done. We saw this with Assassin's Creed Black Flag when he was like slamming doing parkour stuff, and, you know, like breaking next one. I'm like, um, well, he didn't do that in the gameplay, so <laughs> a little hard. It's a little hard to get super super excited about stuff. Uh, I remember with uh, Assassin's Creed Two, I remember if theirs was simple, he jumps from the building, which you could do, and um, you know. Um, Assassin's Creed 2, right? And you can shoot people with the gun. That's gameplay you can do. But again, like it's like again, it's not necessarily all the way through and through the way they showed it. I mean, it's true. I mean, we we don't know, right? We, we I mean, at this point, um, I, I'm I'm gonna say this. Uh, th thanks to Eric the Red in the chat, who's always here. Thanks for being here, dude. And he just said that IGN has seven minutes of footage. Now, I don't promote IGN. But I do want to promote this game. So if that's where you can get seven minutes of footage and you want to see it, I would say head over to IGN and check it out. Or just go to YouTube and go to V1 Interactive and down, you know, check out the two-minute trailer there. Because I don't like promoting IGN. It's just they've really turned me off the last couple of years. Uh, Zemi Games, you know, I know the one thing about you that you enjoy is story. Uh, and uh, atmosphere, right? You, when you get into a game, you really those are two things that immediately jump out for you personally. Uh, did you get a chance to take a look at the trailer? And more importantly, is this a game that you would be, you might be interested because it's going to be telling a very unique story about the way the world collapsed and how they had to address it? Yeah. So I, I mean, one of the biggest reasons why I love Halo so much. Is story right and and this game definitely looks like it has a really good story a really interesting story that you know that that a lot of the times well that, that i don't really even know if any other developer is as necessarily even touched onto this like in in like the sci-fi genre um but yeah i mean now i, I do want to say one thing though before before i jump into my um into my my deep opinions i guess were any of you guys confused on why these were robots that used to be humans, but now they're still wearing clothes? Like, were any of you guys confused about that? Because yeah. I, I was like looking at him and I was thinking to myself, if I was a human put into a robot body, I would just let my chassis run free. I would just run around like <laughs> butt naked <laughs> everywhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not like you have anything. It's, it's kind of yeah. weird. It's like you I mean, guys like... are wearing clothes, but you're not, you have no skin. <laughs> Well, it's, you, not, it's not even armor. It's just clothing. It's like they're, they're really self-conscious robots. You know, um, but but see, that's funny. You should. Say, it's funny you should say that because maybe personality. It's, well, yeah, no, maybe it's because you know they're used to being human, and now they have to figure out they're they're because I'm like you. I'm like, well, I don't need clothes. I I, I have just a metal body. What does it matter? You and know, what like I'm Bender. Everybody should walk around like Bender. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't be like Bender, okay? Don't be don't like be him. Like that Bender, guy is... we'll, we'll at least go out. <laughs> I mean, it was just confusing me. And then there's that one lady in the CGI trailer. She just had a cape on. Like, she was just letting everything out, running free. <laughs> that pilot that you're playing as, he's very constrictive, like, very self conscious, I guess. I don't understand it. Maybe but... he had phobias. I don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, was just, I was just watching the trailer and I just thought of that. And I was just like, man. I don't, I don't know what to take from that, but um, the game looks good. There is one concern that I do have. It looks like the most of the gameplay is going to be you hovering around on that little uh, like bike that looks like it's inspired from Destiny, but not really because it's just hovering and just shooting stuff and telling your teammate or telling your, uh, your that's soldier. What, that's what it appeared, yeah, from the trailer. It did. And, 
And and so just by looking at that, the reason why it's concerning to me is it just doesn't really look like a really dynamic gameplay that that I'm going to want to sit there for hours doing. Maybe it will be, and I won't know that until I actually have my hands on the game and I'm actually doing things. Maybe there's a ton of different controls. Uh, maybe there's a lot more that goes into it than what it just looks like from uh, from seeing like the E3 trailer and seeing this trailer. It just kind of looks uh, kind of bland. Um but but I, I definitely think the game is 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 very promising. And uh, in the same way that Bungie created Destiny, a lot of people jumped on Destiny, you know, number one, because it was a game that interests them. But number two, and probably more importantly, was because Bungie created that game and they, you know, created one of the most successful games being Halo. You know what I mean? And so with, with putting, you know, from the co-creator of Halo on the box, I think that that's going to definitely bump up sales. And I think that that's a smart move to make. But this game is scheduled to come out in 2020, and there is a lot of heavy hitters coming out. And yes, this is a new point. IP that very few people really know about. So I think it's going to be really, really hard on them to get this game out to the masses whenever you know it's going up against uh, the new Watch Dogs game, Last of Us 2, um, you know, uh, Doom Eternal. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, and, and and God knows what else is going to come out later that year. In addition, new consoles are coming out. We're all going to be spending so much money. I don't know if a lot of people are really going to jump on this title for that. So I think that it's really, really important for them to, to bump up their marketing as much as they can. Otherwise, I think that this is going to go... Um, you know, under a lot of people's, uh, under a lot of people's like, you know, view. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think the game's promising. The gameplay looks fun. I don't know if it's fun for me to sit there for hours and play it, but it does look like a very interesting game, something that we haven't seen necessarily before a unique story. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm definitely excited to get my hands on it. Yeah, I mean, I put it to this way: it, it, it uh, the unique. You know, I didn't even really give it any second thought, to be honest with you. If if you were stuck on that bike for the whole game, and there's no like getting off the bike to run around, that would be actually kind of lame. So I, I'm I'm I hate to I hate to say this publicly, but I'm probably gonna head over to IGN to see if there is some uh, different gameplay than what the trailer was showing, because the trailer did show. I it, again, it got me excited. But at the same time, I never really gave it any thought as to, oh, he's on this hover bike and with right. rockets and everything. Is is that it? Is that all that's there? Because if that that's, well, that's it, that's gotta, gonna be gotta look at it. Yeah, so yeah that, you gotta look at the all sides, you know. Yeah, no, that, that would be terrible. Hey, crispy bomb, I, I, I uh, you know, you you were obviously part of the DM before all the technical issues that we had today. Did you get a chance to take a look? at the trailer for Disintegrated, and is it something that might be in your wheelhouse? I did get a chance to look at it. Not really something that would be in my wheelhouse. I, okay. I feel like it had a kind of an identity crisis from uh, what I'm, good I'm point. watching. Okay, so we, we got, you know, we played games like Titanfall. I mean, we could even go back Mech Assault. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like I watched, like, four different games in one which is you know I, I tend to shy away from games like that because i feel like you know that they still don't know what they're, they're gonna do you know what i mean now maybe ign shows something different i haven't watched that yet um but it, it, it's not only not my type of game um but it's also a little disconcerting that it's it's gonna kind of feel like multiple different games and sometimes you just have to stick with what's going good maybe somebody needs to reinvent anthem in a different way that's that's a game i think you know somebody that actually takes some time and actually puts in the work and releases the game at least not broken or just so short-sighted and and somebody really needs to do that because i was so amped to buy that game and i'm still disappointed that they they have not done enough for me to go out and buy it even at the what is it probably 30 dollars or even less. well right now. now if you have ea access it's in the vault yeah, I don't. I have enough subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I hope that you know that they can compete with these big games coming out. I mean, the beginning of the year next year is looking extremely. It's almost people are going to have to make some very tough choices. Sure. And, and there, and I think there's going to be a lot of people making those choices and also thinking about what their purchase is going to be at the end of the year, which I think is going to be. 
a, a significant thing, you know. And I think that's why you're you're seeing Sony kind of release everything in the last gen. But I know we're going to get into some, or, or you may have. I, I have no idea to be honest. But you know, it, the fact that um, there may not be all backwards compatibility. Which yeah, is just... mm-hmm. yeah. We we talked about that earlier while the technical issues were happening, and and there's going to be some, but they they don't have a plan for all. Uh, and that might be yeah. That's a great. That's a great point. And in regards to this, may this having an identity crisis? Yeah, it it did seem like you were watching um, snippets of a lot of different games, and you you, you know. W- w- it's a new IP. I love new IPs. I, I love I love you know having a number after a game, if especially if it's a, an IP that I like. Like when you see the Division Two excited me, and you have Ghost Recon Break uh, Breakpoint, which I'm enjoying. It's uh, fantastic. Or you know Destiny Two, you know uh, with their DLC. You know when you have a continued content for a particular brand, I like that. But I also like new IPs, and I, and this one got me a little bit excited. Um, but before you know, before I move on to the next topic, I owe uh, JD Gamer an, uh, uh, an apology because he dropped not one but two super chats, and because I'm trying to do so many things, I missed it like a boob. Uh, the first time he said uh, he dropped a two dollars super chat, and he said over 100 watching. Let's get those likes up. So yes, thank you so much, JD Gamer, for that. And he asked an, uh, uh, a question, and uh, you know what? I, because uh, because I I want to I want to you know, cover this, I'll, I'll ask the panel. It says, do you think that Microsoft is going to drop VR on us? And I'm going to, I'm going to answer first. And then, uh, Crispy, I'm going to go to you on this and I'm going to say absolutely. Yes. Um, now we saw that how Microsoft's, uh, uh, PR responded to the camera thing. Like, remember the couple of last week or the week after, the week before, that was like, oh, Connect 3.0, the world is over, right? Xbox sucks again. Uh, and they, they kind of put the kibosh on that. Um, I think that VR is coming. I think that uh, there, are, uh, there are certain VR developers that have made it completely wireless. Um, and that's something that Phil Spencer talked about numerous times. Uh, during the Giant Bomb interview, he mentioned it. Uh, during many interviews, uh, uh, post and pre-E3s, he talked about it. Uh, I, I, I would love it. I have been waiting in the wings uh, for VR to come to Xbox. I think that... Um, I mean, listen, it's it's not selling like gangbusters, and I get it. It's a niche, very, very niche market. But it, it doesn't necessarily, for Microsoft anyway, it doesn't necessarily need to be a one-to-one or a 20-to-1 ratio with Xbox Scarlet's to VRs because it's a niche market, and I understand that. But it would be pretty cool if they teamed up with an Oculus for instance, and had them develop the hardware, package and sell the hardware, and just Xbox brand it. Uh, and, and and I think that would be good because VR is something that is going to be around and it's going to get better. And quite frankly, I'm a big fan of it. Crispy, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, not Crispy. I'll come back to you, my brother. Uh, BitCloud, what are your thoughts on JD Gamer's question? Do you think that VR is inbound based on what Mike, uh, what Phil Spencer himself has said regarding the wire situation? Yeah, I think it's possible. Uh, Phil did say VR was coming this gen, but it never really surfaced. You know, right? But, yes. Um, and uh, that was a very, very unfortunate and left a lot of people just uh, angry. <laughs> but looking at the situation now, obviously you saw what happened with Razer. Um, they're partner with Razer and keyboards yes. and mouse. Yes, so yes, yes. That that could play a factor for sure. They could uh, partner with Oculus or um, or um, HV Vive. I think that's what it's called, H Vive or something like that. So they they could partner with either one of those and get a headset going. Because right now it would be it would be unwise, right, to have Sony just sit here and completely dominate this market with VR, especially with the current one. And we don't know when the next one's going to drop yet, but. It'd be unwise for them just to sit back and let Sony just continue to rack in, you know, this crazy profit with VR. You know, well, it's it's not, it's a part of the checklist, in. and 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 yeah. the checklist is important when you talk about what one console has that the other one doesn't. I would agree there. Yeah, and if you can get if Microsoft can sign a deal again, like with a company like Razer or not really Razer, but you know Oculus, and they can get a headset out here that they didn't even have to buy or, or you know. Um, build themselves and waste resources into and it's actually better than the competition and the only thing they have to do is just pay for the trademark and get their branded own version of it i mean that's a win for them if they can do that but you know the fact that they're not doing anything is just uh, 
yeah, that that would be weird if they didn't do anything. So yeah, I would say it would be smart to actually invest into VR. Well, we listen. We we understand that there. Uh, and Zemi, I want to go to you next on this. Uh, you know, it's it's safe to assume, folks. You know, we don't want to make an ass out of you and me, right? Uh, that um. Uh, Microsoft is a bit gun shy when it comes to anything with the w- even starting with the word C, right? Like when you see C <laughs> camera, you know, Phil starts to shake a little bit maybe because yeah, you know, they had some they they had some bad times with it. They had you know, Connect 2.0 was a black mark, uh, black eye, so to speak, for the company, and um, it would be again safe to assume that they do not want to get themselves into development of their own uh, hardware that's a peripheral. They, they Notoriously, Microsoft yeah. has not done well with peripherals. I think they, they want to try it, but the thing is, because um, you know, let's be real, they have a lot of ideas that we saw from the 360 gen. Yes. And, the, and pretty much stuck in developmental hell or just kind of like scrapped. You guys remember the Illuma room? That was a big thing yes. with Connect. It was a huge thing for Connect. They wanted to extend your TV and make everything cool. And I actually thought that that was going to work. I thought that was going to be a cool addition to the console. Um, it never happened. Just like that game with the little girl and the tiger, remember that crazy oh tech demo? God, yes. That never <laughs> surfaced. That never surfaced. So it's like they have ideas for the camera, but it's like those ideas still have to translate into an actual functioning pro- uh, product. And it's hard for them to get that out there. And again, with the whole thing with Connect and the camera, the thing that I would say people are scared of and what were, people were scared of in general with this gen, it was just the overabundance of it, right? It was just so overused in the um, reveal. You know, you had to literally talk to it every time to do just the simplest functions as yeah. opposed to just being a simple priority of you, you know, pressing it on the controller. It's like, I get it. You guys are trying to go past this and be more convenient and this would probably be great for a disabled gamer great for a disabled gamer but it's not something you should be prioritizing right now you still need the games and that's uh well that's, that's probably why we haven't seen it but uh zemi what are what are your thoughts on jd gamers question um do do, do you think that vr even though it may not launch with scarlet do you think that it's possible that it's going to eventually come to the Xbox Scarlet simply because they're going to have the power to run it correctly and more importantly all of the uh hang-ups for VR with uh adaptability and w- and the wire issues that Phil pr- had a problem with seem to have course corrected with technology. What what do you think about that? Yeah, so I think that we're definitely going to see some variant of a VR headset whether it be um you know, like a third-party Oculus Rift or something like that. Um, but I, I would not count it 100% out that Microsoft will not release their own uh, their own version of a VR headset. And the reason being is because, you know, Microsoft has been spending a lot of money in developing the HoloLens. I know that's not necessarily a VR headset, but they have, you know, been spending a lot of money into, into that form of technology. And if they can make more money by releasing their own VR headset that, you know, uh, that that works completely well with the Xbox console. I don't see why they wouldn't do that. Uh, but with that being said, I think it's more likely that they probably would decide to go with like the third party scenario, like what they did whenever announcing keyboard mouse support. They partnered with Razer and made their own like branded keyboard mouse. I think that that's probably more likely than 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 them developing their own technology. But I think that they definitely have the 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 capability. And 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 the previous technology that they've already been researching with the Hololens to create a VR headset. Um, so I think that we will definitely see uh, VR on the on the next system. And and a big reason why we might have not seen VR on the current systems is because I believe Phil Spencer said before that uh, his philosophy is that if a game uh, for, for for a game to come to Xbox, it needs to play on the X, the S, and the Xbox One. Like all their games should be able to be played on the entire Xbox One, you know, console like family. And so, whenever you get into VR and you have a game that is only playable in VR, well, that VR headset may not be compatible with the early Xbox Ones. And so that might be another reason, uh, you know, included with the like the you know like the restrictions of 
wired headsets, that might be another reason why mm. we haven't seen it this Good generation point. as well. Great point. But I definitely think we will see a VR headset or a variant of a VR headset in this gen- in this next generation. Yeah, yeah real that cool. AR tech you brought up. Oh, I'm sorry, you got you. Yeah, no, again, <laughs> it's okay. Oh, that that AR tech, uh, you know the um, what was it, the Hololens? I remember the correctly, they were trying they were trying to sell that to businesses too, right? They were looking yeah, for other yeah, ways yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So so like, there's there's a lot of commercial things. I think like graphic designers can use it. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, like you know, like three D like designers like I believe even for the building uh, aspect uh, of actually you know creating like buildings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. It is cool, but the thing about it though, I think that's just I think that might cost them more money because remember they have to do it in reality. You know, like how they did it with uh, Minecraft, how yes. it looked cool. But it's like, how do you translate something like a uh, gears? Because you know they want to throw gears on this eventually. You know, how you translate that to a gears or um, uh, make gears first table. person? No, boo, yeah, no, no, no. boo that man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know. Um, listen, uh, real quick, uh, actually. Uh, Crispy, I, w- I want to get your your particular opinion on this. Uh, first of all, are are you a fan of virtual reality? And based on what we've known so far, do you think that um, th- that VR is actually going to come to the Xbox Scarlet in the next generation? What are your thoughts on that, dude? Well, I have played the PlayStation VR. Um, not a fan of that, and okay. I think that's where we we come down to. You know. Not only were they been been playing with VR and AR, they've been playing with that, and they don't really know how to. You know, it's almost like sometimes they hear they want to try to do both, and um, not only that, but he wants high fidelity and he wants wireless. All right, and it really wasn't feasible until about now. What you're going to be in a next gen scenario at this point, and that would also kind of go off of what he said. It's not part of Xbox One. It's a new platform. It's another reason to buy the Scarlet. And I think it's a smart way to go about it. Smart. And I think they would, yeah. you know, they would also go to a fact that you can, they're going to probably try to partner with as many people as possible and say, this is our, our goal. We, we want you to be able to play the way you want. Ah, yeah. great point. Smart. Very great point. So, you know, they might, they might offer to everybody. Maybe everybody doesn't take it, but at least they offer and, and then it comes down to, okay, well, then you have on those certain platforms, you might have their, their exclusive games. So you get to choose that. You're, you're you know, and then there's going to be a, a mass overhaul of, you know, how we publish and, and develop games in VR if, if Microsoft gets involved. Because it's always got to be Microsoft first to do it either the right way or screw up. So, <laughs> okay. And maybe they do this one the right way. Maybe Phil has the right idea for once. Yes, he disappointed us. Yes, we thought we were getting it on the Scorpio. And he, he the wording was there, okay? So let's not lie about that. But they had to hold back for a reason. Yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, obviously, the uh, it, I'll put it to this way. If the PlayStation 4 could run their VR, there's no doubt that if there was, a, in fact, a VR for the X... It would be able to run it as good, maybe even better. So uh, I agree with that, and that's a you know that's a great marketing point that you brought up because you know obviously we know that Microsoft wants to have this generation of consoles, but there is going to become a point where the next gen hardware is just going to be that, and maybe the uh, Xbox current can't run it. So maybe, like you said, going out there and saying, "Hey, listen, you know, if you want VR." You know, come on and buy a Scarlet because, I, and I and I think that would be good because it it's going to have the power, the processing power, to run a VR headset properly, and maybe that's the route they should go to sell more consoles. It's it's it's, it's an interesting thought. Um, so whenever Crispy Bomb mentioned you know going to multiple uh, manufacturers of of um of VR headsets, you know, maybe we've been thinking about this all wrong. Cause you know, like we've been thinking, well, it's either one or the other, it's either they're going to get like an Oculus or they're going to make their own headset. You know, I mean, is it not possible for them to actually do both the way that they do headsets, you know, yeah, Xbox that's a great develops point. their own headset yes. and you can also buy a turtle beach or you could buy an Astro or you could buy, uh, you know, a Triton or, 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 you know, whatever, you know, else. Right. So, Who's to say that if they do decide to implement VR, that it's not going to be something along the lines of, you know, how headsets are are, are manufactured today, where you can pretty much go and pick up, you know, any major brand headset or an Xbox brand headset and use it um, 
on your system, you know. So I was just kind of thinking about that as well. That's actually, uh, you know, it's funny. Um, with all the talk, I, I I didn't even think about that because you're absolutely correct. There are many ways to have the headset gaming experience on all the consoles, for that matter. Not necessarily just the Xbox, but offering the choice, which is something that. Uh, uh, you know, remember, you know, Microsoft is the company of options, right? Gamers have options in Microsoft, uh, especially on the Xbox brand, and allowing for different manufacturers of the a VR headset, uh, as long as I guess they fell in line to what Phil wants with the them being wireless, that that's actually a great point, giving uh, people the opportunity to say, hey, listen, I like Oculus better than HD, you know, the, the Vive, for instance, or I like this company better, or I, I want to get the one that's being manufactured by Microsoft because I like their first-party stuff better. So, yeah, that's a that's a great point. And, and I want to thank JD Gamer, not only for the... the uh, the uh, the $4 super chat uh but, but being here as always and also providing an additional topic for today's show that I didn't anticipate talking about but that was a great one I want to move on to the next topic though uh and this of course is another topic that you're only going to find on this particular show because guess what I'm a fan of this game that is currently being remade and has me tickled pink it has been confirmed that House of the Dead 1 and 2 are in fact being remade and all I can say is holy effing cow um the, now, I pulled this story from Dual Shockers, uh, and they're another site that I enjoy going to and reading their works. The developer and publisher of the remake for House of the Dead 1 and 2, are, uh, the, the name of that company is Forever Entertainment, and they confirmed... Uh, on Twitter that they have been in talks with Sega and they do have the IPs and they are currently remaking them. Now, the rail shooter has been obviously a, been a, a long-time staple in the arcade genre for decades and perhaps one of the most iconic series to come out of, of Sega's long history of great titles. Uh, now, while the series itself has only recently been re revived with a new arcade machine that debuted last year, those looking to jump back into the original games, which my wife and I, Miss, Mrs. Boomstick and I, played on the Dreamcast like crack fiends. We loved the House of the Dead. I still actually have the light guns in storage along with both my import and American Dreamcast. Uh, no, I take it back. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm going to say this. Uh, why I'm personally super stoked is this is the same company that has been tasked to remake the original Panzer Dragoon as a Nintendo Switch exclusive. Now, if you haven't seen what it looks like, it looks incredible so if they can take the same style the same skills that they're remaking panzer dragoon and do this for house of the dead it's going to be a day one buy for me personally now as it goes no particular console has been named there's no been exclusive this or exclusive that it's they have the ip and they're gonna they're gonna redo it from the ground up now here is what the developer and publisher forever entertainment had to say on twitter hi guys we want to confirm the signing of the of an agreement regarding remakes of the games house of the dead and house of the dead 2 no platforms or release dates have been confirmed and unfortunately we can't say anything more for now please keep fingers crossed for us and we will let you know in a further update now uh, Big Cloud, I want to go to you. Uh, first of all, House of the Dead uh, may not be may, may not resonate with half of the chat, for all I know. Yeah. But it <laughs> yeah. certainly resonates with me as an old school gamer. What What are your thoughts when you saw I wrote this? We we were taken a little aback when I, you saw this fall into the show notes. Would you be interested in playing House of the Dead one and two again in a proper? 2020 or you know remake gra you know graphical style of 2020 and uh, wh what are your thoughts on that dude 
Oh, absolutely. Um, if it does well, this could also translate into time crisis. Oh, my back. God. Yes. You, you forget about that. You forget about that. See, <laughs> now the thing about the House of the Dead, for those of you that are confused by it, don't know what this was. This was an, an old school, like, arcade favorite. This is why this always was one of the most popping games when you ever go to arcade because they literally have, like, a little whole setup for it. You have to sit in this little... Um, this little seat and it's got like you know the little curtain and you just played the game with the light guns and that that's how it was, <laughs> it in was. The day. and it was so good because like you were not only were you comfortable because you, know, you were standing all day with so many games but it just you know you're shooting at these zombies and i'm kind of wondering what how would this translate into like the light guns are they going to make you just use controllers or are they going to work on like, oh no they're going to they're going to release a gun of some sort even if yeah, it's got to be plugged to, in um, for sure i don't yeah, care and, and um this remake so i'm not sure they're going to if this is going to be a vr title like they're going to do vr with this where um you know that's right actually what jd bike. gamer just said he said imagine if you <laughs> house of the dead one and two launching on the next gen in vr oh it it, it could translate into that because remember, you know you never know with vr they uh, they can always, you know, tweak it and rebrand it for for VR for sure. Because you know they got that VR uh, mic gun. You know, you got the little attachment. You can put yep. the um. The, oh the yeah, they have it for the, the, the for the uh, yeah for uh, the PlayStation VR, which works fantastic, by the way. Yeah, so that 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 can definitely translate into that. But to go back uh, <laughs> to go back to the old uh, old school feel, man. I remember playing House of the Dead two. My jaw dropped when we went against the magician when he made a return again yeah and then uh we got that insane announcement for house of the dead 3 and i got that for the xbox the og xbox and the cool thing about the og xbox when you buy it when you bought um that particular house of the dead 3 it came with house of the dead 1 and 2 it sure did it. yes and it was just awesome they even gave you a sneak peek which the movie was garbage but it was, yeah, it was uh, terrible but it, that the <laughs> games are great the games are great <laughs> games are incredible <laughs> and uh it was so good and it's like man just to see this actually come back is going to be cool. This opens up though, so many doors, and it definitely gets me more and more hype for next gen because you know we hear that uh, more classes are coming, like Ape Escapes coming. What else is coming? I remember Sega stated that they had um, Jet Set Radio Future Seek ready to go. Yes. They just need a publisher. They need a publisher. Who to say Microsoft might not take a gamble and go back to their roots and bring back Jet Set Radio Future? There's not, a lot of possibilities yeah. here with the future, and I'm I'm hyped, man. I'm hyped. I love to see Time Crisis. Though. I love to see that. Time Crisis was great, man. That was really a lot of wires Literally, with that. Yeah. If you remember, it was like wires all over the place. But it was a it was so much fun. Time Crisis was great. It was, it was a good game, but I felt like it didn't get. The, you know, it's crazy. It was such a good game, but I actually felt like it didn't get the same love as House of the Dead. Because remember how House of the Dead had a whole set up with the curtain that you just can't yeah you sit down. the curtain. That's hilarious. Time Crisis, you had to stand up. <laughs> you had to stand up. Yeah, for time Crisis. I, you know, it's funny because uh, somebody in the chat had asked about there's a there's a light gun and games like an arcade home arcade thing launching. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that it's going to be on uh, the, both the PlayStation 4 and uh, and the Xbox One. I don't remember the name of it because it, it was it was early in the year, and I actually I think I actually have it pre-ordered on Amazon. As a matter of fact, um, because I'm 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 an old school cat. I love like um, light gun games, and so does Mrs. Boomstick. She she eats them up. It's great. Uh, but so when I saw this story, and it's funny because I didn't think that this story was going to resonate with so many people in the chat. I mean, a lot of people really liked House of the Dead. I mean, even somebody brought up Typing of the Dead on the Dreamcast, which was really cool. Um, and uh, actually, Wounded Penguin, who's always here, thanks so much for being here, dude, said it'll probably be a Switch exclusive and work with the Joy-Con. That's that's a possibility. But I I would I'd like to believe. That the House of the Dead franchise could, in fact, it, it, it's 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 an IP that holds that still holds, in my opinion, a lot of weight and would do very well being a multi-plat. I, I hope that's the route yeah. that they go. To be honest, I, nostalgia alone will sell that game. Sure, your, your absolutely. Yeah, your childhood was still that game. And another thing that's cool too, um, apparently uh, people were telling me about this, but apparently there's there's actual new uh, House of the Day games. However, they're like exclusive to Japan. They're not yeah, necessarily they're, they're, in the Western. Were you talking about like um, in the arcades? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's are, one. There's yeah. one out now that came out that came out this year, and it's doing extremely well in the yeah, Japanese arcade scene, which is still a thing. 
Yeah, I, that's crazy. I heard about it and I looked at it and I looked at some of the gameplay. I just thought it was sick. Like it looked really, really good. Like really, like it, it updated it with us. You know, it got with the times, so to speak. And it's just, man, that's that's one franchise that it just I don't think will die anytime soon. I'm tell you why? Because it's just so engaging. You're really into it. You well, know, I mean, it is it, it is a zombie game, so technically, it's never really going <laughs> to die. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Good point. Good point. Good point. Um, hey, that's uh, good though. That's good though. Because remember, we had, um, with this new. That's good. Because remember, we have dying light. It was the last thing that we heard for yeah, zombie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen. I, I. I am. I am all for going back to our roots with updated graphics. And and I and I do hope this comes to uh, multiple consoles. Not not just because I want to see. Uh, you know, it come to multiple consoles so everyone can play. I want to see this come to multiple consoles because if it does sell well, this is this 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 means that we could logistically um, have a company dedicating uh, their team, maybe even Sega themselves, to actually bringing that arcade version uh, that's currently doing so well in Japan to the home consoles, and that in itself would be amazing, Zemi. Okay, now you're again. I say this all the time. He's the youngest dude on the plat on, on on this on this you know on the podcast. Do you? I know you don't like zombie games. I know you don't like scary games. But House of the Dead really isn't scary. Mm-hmm. You're fighting monsters, sure. You're shooting zombies, but you're not. You know, you're shooting them, and it, and it's more hilarious than it is anything. Do you know what House of the Dead one and two are? And if it did come out, would you play it? Because you can't play with two players. Um. Yes. Yeah, so. So. You know, as I was a young kid, I went to the arcade, and uh, I don't know if it was House of the Dead or if it was, like, a game somewhat like it, but, I mean, I remember I was standing, and I was holding, like, a little pistol, pointing it at the screen, shooting zombies. Scared the crap out of me. I then went and uh, (laughs) spent all my money on skee-ball, because, you know, that game (laughs) will not scare you. Um, Do I think the game is going to scare me now? No. I still watched, because I was, like, researching it last night, and I still watched it with the sound down. You know, just to, just to make sure. You know, sometimes you gotta you gotta go into things a certain way. And and um, I I remember playing games like that. I also remember playing like at, at the arcade. They had this game with like a big sniper, and you were flying on a helicopter, and like you were shooting people on buildings, uh, bad guys. I would imagine. Um, and then there was another game where you were like a cop and crouching down to the left and leaning to the right to get into cover and stuff. Yeah, virtual so, cop. Like, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I always really really games like that i i can't say that i was really addicted to the zombie one because uh i i i played it like once or twice and never went back um but you know i i do like games like that i do like the nostalgia that those games bring and i wish that there was more of that like that's kind of like something like i was really kind of hoping for whenever the connect came out but i never really saw anything that was quite like that um but i think one of the biggest challenges for this game would be how exactly you know, are they going to get it on all the different consoles? Because Xbox doesn't really offer any way of having that type of uh, that type of um, of gameplay. I mean, I guess you could play the game with your controller, but that doesn't seem nearly as good as playing it like in VR or playing it with um, with with you know just like aiming like a little virtual gun like at the screen with a sensor or something. So you know, part of me kind of hopes that if they do release this game, that they you know put it in like a big box with like a sensor and a gun, kind of like how Duck Hunt was. Yes. Um, yes. Because that that's just going to add to the game. You know, I, I, I think a lot. Um, and I think the game would perform absolutely amazingly well, like in 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 like the VR. Uh, you know, on the VR scene. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm definitely excited about it. I don't know if I'll ever play it, um, but I, I do like the nostalgia of these old shooters on rails. Yeah, no, me too. I, I agree. You know, Crispy Bomb, you are on a show uh, called Retro Renegades, and you're there because you have an appreciation of of the industry when it was more a simple time, right? You you appreciate the classics of where we've come from and where we are now. So when I put this story in here, I thought of you because I'm like, well, listen, he's on Retro Renegades and those guys like older games. What are your thoughts on the fact that they're, it's been confirmed that they're going to remake House of the Dead 1 and 2? I am so amped. I mean, this is going to just bring me way back to just 
jamming out at the arcade, fighting people for uh, spots. Putting your quarter line. up, right? My quarter's yeah. up. I got next. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, th- these games, I mean, Sega has made so many games like this. I, it, I just, I got to get into some speculation real quick. Imagine if Xbox announces VR and says a Sega Arcade VR collection in Game Pass. That would be absolutely absurd if they up all the games. You remember Sega had a big meeting in Redmond a long time ago. They sure and did. we all talked about yeah, it. Yeah, we did. I'm, and they always are hiding something we never find out. Remember when the, all these extra studios just showed up out of nowhere? You know what I mean? And, and all of a sudden you got five instead of two maybe, and it, that was com- complete speculation. These guys could not be even saying nothing about it, and all this little VR thing is just a hint of, of these you know little things just showing up out of nowhere. And now, and now they're not announcing what platform they're on or anything now maybe it'll be multi plat and maybe it's exclusive to game pass you never know they they can go all these crazy routes now it's it's look l- let me just say this as great and unbelievable as 2020 is going to be with your last of us 2 your halo infinite your cyberpunk 2077 your doom eternal there there is it's it's if you are a graphics whore like myself, you're in for a real treat uh, because these games are going to be ultra powerful, great looking, incredible original stories. I mean, everything I think I just mentioned, all four of those games could potentially be in the game of the year talk. And we don't know anything else that's coming out in the fo- in uh, 2020. And we already have four potential game of the year contenders it just it just goes to show you how crazy it is i am gonna say this if and when house of the dead one and two panzer dragon remake maybe we even get a virtual cop one and two remake come out in the same year that those four behemoths it's really going to for me as an old school gamer just hit that checkbox like one after another. I mean, you get your you get your retro games in there. You got your classic games being remade. They look amazing. They bring you back to when you were a kid. You're getting all this new content. You're getting new consoles. My God, 2020 is going to be such an incredible year for gamers. And I, and I really want to kind of just drive that point home. And I'm not saying it's only going to be incredible for Xbox or it's only going to be incredible for PlayStation and or Nintendo. If you are a gamer, regardless of what flag you fa- fly, 2020 is shaping up to potentially be the greatest year in gaming and everyone in this panel, everyone on the chat, Everybody, and I said that wrong, in and on, everybody that's going <laughs> to listen to this show, uh, hopefully on the back end, have a lot to be excited about. Now, I am going to say yeah. this. We are, um, I mean, that's going to, that, we, we, we had a bit of a rough start. We were about 15 minutes later, um, and I do kind of want to get everybody here because we are at the 12 o'clock hour. But it, it, but I, I think, uh, Big Clyde, is there something you wanted to add to this? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm again, like I said, I'm just excited. You are. I remember the days when dudes used to have these awkward stare downs with people <laughs> at the arcade over this game. Open <laughs> yeah. the I know you remember this. Yeah, like I, the, do. The I do. I do. I remember people's quarters like, being thrown across the yeah. arcade. I, mean, I remember that. <laughs> I remember dudes used to rush to get their quarters in there to, to probably get to start from your progress in the game. It was so many, <laughs> so many things that happened with that game. It was, it was good memories. But what I'm very, very proud of is that this is not only going to be great for us, but it's going to be great for new generation yes that's a great point that's a really great point really really good because if you think about it um the one thing that i would say i think you would agree too especially house of dead too the dialogue is not the best no it's pretty terrible (laughs) it's like like, you know like the the dude who's the um prime you know the real reason why the zombies are causing havoc his name's bowman he's like people of the ims i am bowman like that's all he does yeah he's pretty bad jumps off he goes goodbye friends and he dies it's like (laughs) wow (laughs) so if they're gonna remake these you know, hope that'd be cool if they really gave it like a Resident Evil 2 type of vibe. Well, not really Resident Evil 2, but you know, give it like a real serious tone with the dialogue, give you more of an original story, have the classic characters return like the magician. I would love to see how they would make the magician look in 2019 on a oh, PS5 or whatever. Pretty interesting. It'd be pretty cool. 
You know, they pull out the classic uh, notebook that shows you the weaknesses of the zombies. Oh, that's... wow. Wow, yeah. dude. I remember that. That's, that's you remember that, that right? Yes. You didn't know what the weakness was until you look at the notebook. The first one didn't tell you the weakness. You had to, like, think and shoot. <laughs> Second one, they gave you the weaknesses. And then, you know, obviously, um, uh, House of Death 3 also gave you the weaknesses. But it was just so many good memories with that game. So many, so many. Well, I. Uh, I'll, I'll say something else though too. Is is I mean, is anyone else kind of shocked how like One Up Arcade has not tried to monetize on these types of games yet? That's actually a great point. You know what it is? Uh, I actually uh, I'm partnered with a, a One Up Arcade. I haven't done a review in a while. They haven't sent me anything. I was hoping to try and get my hands on the Turtle Machine, um, but that's a great point. Uh, you know what? I I, I think the the technology to have two light guns attached to uh, uh you know one of the smaller arcade might be expensive dude like they, they you know they, they, their claim to fame is that you can get uh an arcade like for instance the turtle machine that comes with the uh the stand you know the the the, the 14 inch stand that makes it the full size arcade in regards to height mm -hmm. is 400 right uh and that's four players you know they had to add they had to add the, the additional course of two additional controllers to make and, and and listen if you if you have if you're a ninja turtles fan and i think who the frick isn't a ninja turtles fan by the way oh, yeah. uh oh, turtles yeah. one and turtles uh two in the uh, turtles in time are perfect on our uh, arcade one up and it it the it's it's a gorgeous machine uh and i think it's i think it's currently only available and at in walmart as an exclusive or directly from them but that's a great point zemi i i think it might be cost yeah possible i mean yeah it's gonna be interesting I mean, I, again um vr and everything light guns it's, it's a lot to take in on how they're gonna do the newer titles for sure and, yeah, and, not, yeah. I want to say anything you want to add, Zemi. No, I was just going to say. You know, I would just kind of think that you know, with like us being in modern times, and and you know, obviously they wouldn't implement the same technology that they put in those machines in like the '90s or whatever. But I, I don't know. I would just imagine that it would be cheaper. You know, yeah, exactly. Like there, there, there could be you know some roundabout way of doing it. Possibly, maybe. I don't. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting, and it's funny because I'm going to reach out to PR for two things. One, I want to still see if I can get my hands on, on the Turtles machine to do an unboxing because I really enjoyed the arcade uh, uh, machine that I was able to. I did the Midway 4-in-1 arcade unboxing for the channel, which was amazing, and I'd love to, to do the Turtles one. So I'm going to reach out to PR, but I'm also going to send them a message and ask about that because that's a great point. Could you imagine... <laughs> Could you imagine if if they release the original House of the Dead one and two ho as a home arcade? You know what I'm saying? And it, wow, uh, it would. I think I'd have to actually buy that, even if it was like five, six hundred bucks. I'd have to figure out a way to <laughs> get that. Like uh, like the miniature arcades they have, like for um, yeah, you talking about those like the mini arcades? Yes, cool. yes. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. They have like the guns that go in there because that's how it was. They they gave you the blue and red. Yeah, gun. <laughs> you kind of hosted the gun in the front of the machine. That's that's uh, that's been, well. Listen, I'm going to say this. You know, considering that we had a bit of a rocky start. The show was absolutely fantastic. I had a blast. We had 150 people. We still have 135 people listening. And I got to be honest with you, folks. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because you, you are the reason why Double Barrel Gaming is a success without the community all content creators are nothing. I want you to, I, and I want that to be completely known that we are powered by not only your generosity, but the fact that you come in and you listen each and every week. And I, and I hope that uh, you enjoyed today's show. I had a lot of fun. Uh, we did have a smaller panel, but you know, again, life happens. You know, things happen, and, and, and it is what it is. So I want to get everybody out of here, uh, and I, I'm going to go to the first. Uh, the, the I'm going to go to um, Crispy Bomb first. First of all, dude, thank you honestly. For continuing to grind at trying to get in here, because we gotta have you back, dude. Uh, you're, you're a great speaker. You do great on coffee casuals and consoles. You're great on retro renegades. You bring a lot to the community. You're always out there hustling, bustling, and talking with folks. And 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 I think everybody appreciates that. Do me a favor. Tell everyone where they could uh, uh, check you out on Twitter. But more importantly, you know, listen to you when you're on your other shows. 
Well, hey, thanks for having me, Boom. You know, it was uh, it's tough, but I'm persistent. I think you could uh, find that out now. <laughs> it took me a, took me a little little uh, grinding to get through. Definitely uh, the perfect word. Um, yeah, but it's at Crispy Bomb on Twitter. I'm on Coffee Casuals and Consoles. I'm also on Retro Renegades and uh, usually on Neck Podcast for the time being. Oh, nice, um, nice. Yeah. So, and I, you can find me anywhere. You know, if you hit me up on Xbox, that it's at, uh, Crispy Bomb on Xbox Live, and um, yeah, it's just uh, it's great that I got on and had some great topics at the end, which was perfect. So, well, listen, dude, we're gonna definitely have you back. I'm gonna be hitting you up in a DM uh, for next week's show. Might be a little stack, but we're gonna see what we can we can get you in maybe towards the end of October. Get you back over here for a full on two hours because I like what you bring to the table. You're an old school cat like myself. And uh, I, I do I do like the way you interact with the community. So we're definitely going to have you back. So thanks again for being persistent and, of course, for being here. Uh, Zemi Games, I want to go to you, dude. Uh, you got a lot going on. Uh, and uh, you are obviously uh, a bright spot in the community because you're always willing to help others. You have a lot of stuff going on on your channel uh, with how-tos and, and playthroughs, and you do a lot of reviews. Do me a favor. Tell everyone where they can follow you on Twitter. And come on, folks. If, if you're like me, you're probably going to like Zemi. Hey, get over to Twitter and, and, and get this guy some followers and tell everyone where they can sub your amazing YouTube channel, dude. Thank you so much, Boom. Um, if you guys want to, you can go check out my YouTube channel. I do Xbox tutorials, reviews, all sorts of things, uh, gaming related. Uh, you can go uh, check out that channel. It's called Zimmy Games. Uh, and if you guys want to as well, you can go to Twitter and follow me there. Uh, I, I'm not the most active person, but I do post uh, some things there, usually at least once a week. Uh, and that is at Zimmy Games as well. So thank you so much, Boom. And uh, thanks. Yeah, appreciate it very much for being here. And last and certainly in no way least, uh, the, one of the newest members of the Breakfast with Boom family, someone that I'm proud to work with each and every week, who already has an outstanding 5,000-plus uh, membership uh, posse for his amazing YouTube channel and is also a very active person in the community because he's on a lot of shows. And I'm talking about... A uh, BitCloud Gaming, aka Ryan the Professional, which of course you are each and every week. Tell everyone where they can follow you on Twitter, but more importantly, check out your personal YouTube channel and also some of the other shows you're on, dude. Oh, absolutely, man. Um, I'll be here obviously Fridays, uh, 10, 10 p.m. in the morning for <laughs> Breakfast of Boom, obviously. <laughs> so I'm here with uh, this awesome dude and everybody on this panel. It's always a pleasure. Um, obviously, today is Friday as well, so I'll be live on my channel. Um, you guys can find me on that channel, which is Big Cloud Gaming. Uh, we do the RGT podcast every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern time, so that starts in a few hours today. So I would love to have everybody here. If you guys are interested in absolutely swinging by and uh, at least saying what's up. Definitely uh, check us out. It's always a pleasure to see a lot of you from this show um, here. Uh, yeah, I did say 10 p.m. Sorry, I goofed 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> but I goofed. But yeah. um, it's always a pleasure to see you guys from there, from here over there. And uh, it's always a pleasure to talk game with everybody. Um, it's a great thing. Uh, you guys find me again on YouTube there at Big Cloud Gaming, as well as Twitter, the exact same name. And um, you can definitely join our Discord on our um, on the YouTube channel. It's called the RGT Army. Why don't you be a member and uh, definitely join the fray, talk some gaming, and have some fun. Definitely. And as far as other podcasts are concerned, I'm also on Scumcast, and I co-host the Gamer Couch podcast with my brother, uh, Foster Games UK, on Sundays at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And, uh, yeah, that's where you find me. Yeah, you know, actually, gotta, I got you know. Next time you talk to Fox, I gotta get, I gotta get him on here. I haven't had him on here yet, and I, I've actually watched his stuff. He's actually really good. Uh, I'd love to have him on as a guest. But listen, everyone, I want to wish everybody a fantastic weekend. Uh, you know, two things I like to close out each and every show with. Uh, one, treat others how you'd like to be treated. I think that's really simple, and it will work well for you. And the other thing is, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. So with that, I wish everyone an amazing weekend, a safe weekend. Enjoy gaming. There's a lot to play. And we will see you next week on the newest episode of Breakfast with Boom. Take care, everyone.